Hey, Andre, we've got a very special podcast, and that's because I'm here and Nathan isn't? Well, no, it's because you and I have just returned from Michigan, and we got to first drive and first tow and go even on a dirt road with the all-new Chevy Silverado EV work truck. Yep, and in this podcast, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the new electric Silverado. Plus, uh, we got a chance to chat with the chief engineer, Nicole. She was great, and uh, we asked her some pretty hard questions, actually. We, we, we didn't pull our punches. Well, you didn't pull some punches. <laughs> I... Well, we're, we've been friends with Nicole because... So you pulled uh, your punches? Well, no. Uh -oh. I asked her... I, th I thought I asked her some tough questions okay. as well. Okay, all right. Yeah. And then um, that'll be in the middle of the show, and then we'll come back, and we're going to tell you uh, how the Silverado EV compares with the competition. In other words, how does it compare to the Lightning, the Rivian, uh, the Hummer EV? Uh, is there any other electric trucks? Or is that well, all? the upcoming trucks, too. I mean, the Cybertruck will maybe eventually be here. Right. Yes, that's a big if. <laughs> so, so yeah, but mostly Ford. I would say mostly Ford and Rivian. And then, of course, we'll, we'll thank our Patreon members as well. But let's start with two big numbers. Uh, yeah. Um, and one is good big and one is bad big. Ooh, wow. Which one do you want, the good big or the bad big? Uh, let's start with the bad. Uh, the bad big, yeah. So th we drove the work truck, uh, and there's going to be four flavors or four models of it, and we drove the top of the line. It's called the 4WT. So WT stands for work truck, and there's numbers one through four. And the four means the fanciest one, right? The biggest battery. And this is a fleet sale truck, so they're going to come out with the fleet sale truck first. Uh, so if you don't have a fleet number with GM, uh, you're not going to be able to order this one. But we will talk about the RST as well, which will be the first version that will be available to everybody. But let's talk about the bad number, which is what, Andre? How much does it cost? It's the price. Yes. It's the starting price, which is around $78,000. And it's going to be closer to seventy-nine and a half and a half with destination charges. So let me repeat that. $78,000 or seventy-nine dollars or $80,000 for a work truck. Wow. Yeah. So that that's the bad big number but there's a good big number yeah what is that uh that's the range what is the range andre 450 miles and this is real world well we haven't tested it confirmed it yet but this is epa rating and gm swears chevrolet says this is real and we're guessing on this but we figure it's got the same battery as the hummer ev which is around 212 kilowatt hours yeah uh, but this truck is much more aerodynamic it's not like a brick into the wind uh, and so it pot I think it's realistic that it will have that kind of range. But what that means, which is also good, is that it actually might be able to tow because the problem with any of the current trucks right now is, and that includes Rivian, is that with the small batteries they have, the Lightning has 130 kilowatt hour, uh, is that you basically tow for an hour and charge for an hour and tow for an hour and, and charge for an hour. That's not good. No, if you want to go cross country. Or if you want to stay in your neighborhood, you tow for an hour, you charge for an hour. Right? That's not good. Uh, but with 450 miles of range, you figure cut that in half when towing. And we're being very um, conservative. But we did try that. We did tow. The, we did tow a little bit. We did, but we, we yeah yeah we, we got it down to about one mile per kilowatt hour. Yeah, and this is was on a local loop around 55 miles an hour. Yes. So it was a limited test. So, so it wasn't our total test. We towed what 8,000? Uh, yeah, 8,000 pounds. So realistically, at one mile per kilowatt hour, you're looking at 212 miles of range. I mean, from zero to 100. Yes. So, so, but that's better than before. That's better than any other pickup that's electric. And if you're towing less, let's say it's a 6,000 or 5,000 pounds, then it might be, you know, 200 feet miles of range. And if you're towing in the winter, then it might be 190 miles of range, right? There's a lot of ifs there. Uh, but let's talk about the truck. So let's start with where we always start styling. What do you think of the look of the thing, Andre? Well, so here's one issue I have okay. um, before we get to the Nicole interview, right? Yes. So uh, it's only available in white right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what happened to other paint colors in the GM's truck <laughs> <laughs> truck factory. <laughs> like, like the Hummer EV. Yeah, they, they just like white. So all new Hummers, edition ones, were white. Now all new work trucks. Okay, I get it. Work trucks or work vehicles are usually white. Yes. Because people put their business logos on them. People do other things. They wrap them in different um, colors, etc. cetera. So um, usually white is not the most kind of appealing color. And also um, the front. So 
because they tried to make this as affordable as possible, even though it's not super affordable, they tried to take some content out of it, right? So the wheels are 18-inch wheels. The front has a black front fascia combined with uh, white color. It's I'm not in love with it. It's just not too appealing to me. What about you? Um, so um, I don't mind it. It looks very futuristic, especially in the RST where that light signature bar goes all the way across. I think it's very handsome uh, as opposed to the work truck where it's obvious a little bit of plain Jane. Now, before we scare you, keep in mind that that's the top of the line work truck at 79000 GM is advertising right now, as last time I checked, which was couple days ago, a $39,000 starting price, but we don't think that's real. Right, and it's likely to change. So GM GM says... It will change. uh, Yes, so what happened was really, you know, Elon Musk um, first made the debut of the Cybertruck concept, and he said, my Cybertruck will start at 40K, and I think it got rattled some cages, right? Because Ford said, our F-150 Lightning will be 40,000, and then GM said, our Silverado EV is going to be 40,000. But now, it's no longer true. The base Lightning, the F-150, we'll talk about that after at the end of the show, starts at 59,000 now. Yeah, so I figure the base work truck for the Silverado will be in that range. I think that's a fair guess. Probably mid 50s. Yeah. This is just our guess, right? It's a, it's a fair guess, yeah. Now, GM is quick to point out that the difference between uh, their truck and the Lightning, which it will directly compete against, is that it's a ground up electric truck. And we were there with uh, uh, the straight pipes, Yuri uh, and Jacob, right? Yes. And you asked the chief engineer, we'll get to this in an interview, yeah. uh, you know, what is this? Is it, is it body on frame? Is it skateboard? Is it... Is the unibody. Is it unibody? Uh, and she came up... What did she say? I forget what she called it. It was some funny kind of thing. But Jacob like, actually came up with something even better. He called it he called it uh, unibody on frame, <laughs> because it, right, it doesn't have that classic cut line between the cab and uh, the bed. Exactly. Um, so they call them like ultium body or ulti body, ulti body or something, ulti-body. Body, something like that. Because ultium is their electric term, right? And so, but, 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 but unibody on frame is probably a good description. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but really, I mean, it's the battery chassis. So the wheelbase. What connects the truck, the, the, the basis of it is the battery box, right? And the battery is also structural. It's a very large component. And then the body is built on top of it. So it's kind of both. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of the body on top of the frame, uh, one of the things that struck us immediately when we got into the truck is just how big that cab is. Oh, my God. Oh, oh that's it's mega rem mega cab territory. It is, yeah. It's yeah. Huge. huge. And the bed is five eleven. Yes. Uh, but the cab is <laughs> probably five five eleven <laughs> as well. Yeah, it's enormous. Those doors. Uh, I, I think at a job site you'll be fine, but parking it in a tight parking space, you know, those doors. You know what those doors are like? They're like a door on a two door. The British say coupe. We say coupe, right? They're like a two door. Uh, coupe because they're so long but but there's four of them yeah. in this case so yeah it's a gigantic interior space and the good it's news huge. is it just means you have so much space both in the front and in the back of the truck and there's of course the front area in the front right so uh, there's not not you know there's some storage what, what size is that compared to the lightning uh so 10.7 cubic feet in the chevrolet versus 14 cubic feet in the lightning so the lightning has the upper hand as far as volume in the front is now how about horsepower so the work truck has its own rating, right? It's a two-motor system. All-wheel drive. So, so all-wheel drive, one motor in the front, one motor in the rear. For the work truck, for the Chevy, it's 510 horsepower and 615 pound-feet of torque, which is, you know, plenty for a work vehicle of any kind. Yeah, maximum tow rating of 10,000, 0 to 60, what, in about 5.7, I think they're saying, or 5.8. Um, yeah. Just under six seconds. And, and maximum payload, they said about 1,400 pounds. Although which, some, isn't, which isn't grand. No, that's not a bad number, yeah. I would say, because my Chevy Colorado has a payload of 1,500 pounds. But 10,000-pound um, uh, tow rating, like you said. Yeah, I mean, uh, the 1,400 is also, like you said, a bad number because uh, as a work truck, you want to be able to put a lot of stuff in the bed, especially if you're, you know, hauling, I don't know, rocks, right? And you'll quickly... Concrete bags. Yeah, you'll quickly exceed 1,400, but that's because the batteries are so heavy. And by the way, uh, we figured out how much it weighs. Now, every... This is funny. You know, every automotive journalist, right? Yes. And I say automotive as in car, always, like, gets freaked out and is obsessed with the fact that the Hummer uh, EV uh, weighs 9,400 pounds, 
Right. Right. Well, that's like the only thing that they ever talk about. Because let's face it, guys, a lot of other automotive journalists out there mainly focus on cars and not trucks. You know, Andre here. Well, a lot of diesel trucks weigh 9,500 pounds. Yeah, so I, I had no issue with the Hummer EV being, you know, I mean, it's a truck. <laughs> They're heavy, right? This is what trucks are. It's not a lightweight sports car. If you want a Miata, then go get yourself a Miata. And they're all like, oh, my God, it's 9,400 pounds. So what? It's 9,400 pounds. That's not the big number. The big number is, of course, payload, and that's the number that the batteries take up mm -hmm. and the truck doesn't have. Now, this truck weighs how much, Andre? So we calculated it. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 9,990 pounds. So this is also very interesting because it's just under 10,000. And it weighs about 8,500 pounds. So about 1,000 pounds less than a Hummer EV. Right. So they stripped about 1,000 pounds out of it compared to that yeah. Hummer. Of course, no, no removable roof panels. No, no mid-gate. No air suspension. We'll get to the mid-gate in a yeah. second. No air suspension, which is also... Uh, kind of uh, good, I guess, because that's less to break, right? Right. No rear steering. No rear steering. Which is also okay, because yeah. this truck actually steers really well. It's got a really good turning radius. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, on the interior, um, and if you want to see what this looks like besides, you know, listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, you can go to All TFL. Uh, and we've put out plenty of videos. Yeah. We've put out a like first... six videos. A first tow, how you can power stuff with it. Of course, a comparison to the RST, which is the... You know, the civilian version of this truck. But I like the interior of this truck. I like it a lot because it's all vinyl. It's all very kind of just everything you need, nothing you don't. So two smallish screens, which is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, just a lot of room. And it's the kind of interior where if you're like at a work site or if you're working on your car and you're covered in filth and you just get in the thing, you don't care. Yeah, you can wipe it down, wash it out. So I, I love the interior. The seats, you know, are kind of reminding me of a standard Silverado. You know, just the design of them and kind of the comfort level. So, so the seats are maybe a tiny bit on the harder side. Yeah, that's always been the rub with Chevy seats, right? Yeah, but still humongous space. You can stretch out. You can, you know. Well, dude, the back. Okay, the back. <laughs> If you fold up those seats, there's this giant. You could ice skate in the back of this thing with the seats folded up. Seriously, yeah. if if you if you were you know high challenged, spray in some water, let it freeze, and go for it. <laughs> See if you can do you, a triple. Or you could put a little cell cow. <laughs> you could put a little mattress in there and go to sleep. And speaking of going to sleep, let's talk about the mid gate. This was one of the questions we'll, we'll get to. I asked the engineer, but yeah. uh, and you'll certainly want to hear her answer, but. Uh, you don't get the mid-gate or the fancy tailgate, right? The the one that folds in 14 different ways like Japanese origami. Yeah. You don't get that in the work truck. You do get that in the RST. Uh, but tell them about the mid-gate. How does that work? Yeah, so it's kind of reminiscent of the Avalanche trucks sure. that they had before. Uh, but it's it's a little bit more versatile. So you could leave the rear glass end in the cab Um and just fold the bottom parts so you can have a pass through from the bed to the cab and that folds in 40 60 orientation so you can leave one part up one part down so somebody could still sit in the back seat while you have some long items i don't know your kayak or your wood you know your your uh, two by four two by fours that are laying down in there sure. so or you can remove the glass four by eight <laughs> And you could have a humongous space from the bed into the cab. Or if you have, if you leave the glass in and put a tunnel, you could kind of like sleep in there, right? You could, yeah. You could have a little cubby where your head is inside the truck's cab and your feet are inside the truck's bed. Yeah, just basically laying down. Which, which of course, you know, begs the question, why not just get a topper? Because <laughs> you could then do the same thing, right? You could. Inside the topper. You could, sure. But, but, but at least it's heated then. Yes, and the RSD, by the way, starts at 105,000. All right, and then the other cool thing about this truck um, is that it's got, Ford calls it onboard power, but Chevy calls it offboard power. <laughs> so tell me about that, Andre. What's the offboard power? So it's a combined 10.2 kilowatts. Uh -huh. So inside the truck, so in the front area, inside the cab, inside the bed, you can have up to 7.2 kilowatts. So this is what the F-150 hybrid also offers, right, or the Lightning. But then they have an additional little dongle that you can plug into the charge port outside the truck, right? Yes, that's a cool. It's basically a char It looks like it's a charger, but it's not. Right. So it, it actually ahead. puts the power out. Yeah. So as you know, if you've been watching our videos, Hyundai has this little dongle 
and it's called Vehicle to Load, V2L. And basically what it does, it's a little dongle you plug into the charge port, and because um, that charge port works both ways, right? You can have electricity going in or out. This dongle basically has two 120 outlets on it. Yeah. But Chevy's gone one better. Yeah, they have a long cable. So they were showing us, and we have a video about this, a cable that was about 25 or 30 feet long. So you can actually have it outside the truck and maybe power some additional items. Well, hold uh, on, hold on. You're, you're downplaying this. This is this is what? You, no, this no, no, no. Maybe power. No, no. You're, what? You're 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 burying the lead. Let me explain. What is it? Let me explain. Okay, so you've got you you plug in. Uh, you know, the, the receptor that you would normally use to charge the truck, but instead of going to a charger, there's a cable that goes to a big box, right? And that big box has, I think, three or four 120 outlets. Or right? even higher power. Or, or even higher power. Yeah. And, and what I mean by you're burying the lead is, imagine your power goes out in your house, you, now you plug this thing into your truck, you take that box, you run it into your house, and you plug your refrigerator into it, you plug, you know... No, you... you why not? It's only three kilowatts, Roman. Three thousand watts. It will barely run your microwave and your fridge together. You can't power an entire house on three kilowatts. They were powering two. Uh, they were powering uh, two food trucks. So, they're, they're, here's the thing. Okay, Ex uh, educate me, Andre. So, seven point two kilowatts. We tried power our friend's Justin's house. Right. It was barely enough to run his television, his fridge and maybe even his heater and his oven, okay. right? So 7.2 is just, I would say, the minimum to power a home. Um, so this truck can still do it, and it can um, do it from the bed. Okay. Uh, from this exterior cable, it's only about 3 kilowatts, which, can, which, with, which they showed powering a barbecue trailer. So they had a barbecue, kind of a food truck trailer that was feeding us really, really yummy stuff. So you can power smaller things with it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, all right. What can you power on the three thousand watts? I, I, so, I, so you can power an air compressor, for example, which you, is you about fifteen hundred I mean, I mean, watts. That it works. You could you could you could power radio, which they had. I'm just going with the stuff they had. Yes. You could power a table saw. Yes. Right. You could power uh, anything that needs to be charged up. So like a, a rechargeable battery for any of your rechargeable tools or implements that you have. Right. But you're saying you can't power a refrigerator. You could, but only the refrigerator. Okay. Like, it's, it's hard to power your house. So what, your, what we're saying is house. there are two ways to get power out of the truck. One is off the charging port, and then one is off the outlets in the bed of the in, truck. Yes. And the outlets in the bed of the truck put out a lot more power than the, than the reverse charge hole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, and more so, you can use the interior outlets inside the bed, inside the cab, while moving. Which is a big deal, right? So, so you could you could potentially power your work tools on the way on the way there to the to the job right. site. Yeah. Or what we did, remember, with the lightning, you could power a car that you're towing that's electric. Right. Exactly. So this truck will do that too. Okay. All right. So that's cool. All right. Well, I, I think we, it's come to that time in uh, this podcast where uh, we uh, have a nice conversation with Nicole. You want to tell them about Nicole before we cut to that video? Yeah, Nicole Kratz, uh, she's been a GM for many years, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's, she claims you know, she, that she's owned a pickup truck for a very long time, and it used to be uh, powered by internal combustion. Now she's in charge. She's the chief engineer of this new platform, the Silverado EV Ultium platform. So she's also involved with GMC because GMC Sierra EV is also coming, right, in a slightly different, you know, form factor. So she got to design a ground-up truck. And yeah. She was very happy about it. Yeah, and then the truck that we kind of do a tour with her around is her own personal truck. She owns it. She, well, it's her, yeah, I don't know if she well, owns it. But well, she, she's put on 10,000 miles. So, yes, so she's been driving it. She's been driving it for 10,000 miles. It's a Silverado EV. And you'll want to wait till the end of the uh interview to find out what she calls it. All right, let's cut that. Let's cut to that interview. Nicole, hello. Hi. We've spoken many times. We have. Right. So last time I saw you, we were talking about the RST Chevy Silverado EV truck. Yes. But now we're standing next to a work version whoa, 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 whoa. of it. Her truck. My truck. Why is he interrupting this us? This is a Silverado EV work truck. That is my personal Wait, ride so every belongs, single day. So belongs to you. It is mine. OK. So. It's very clean. How it's many miles? Well, you're the chief engineer. I am. So it makes sense that you would drive one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but how many miles have you put Over on Over 10,000 miles. Can I see? 
Um, yeah, you can okay. see. No, no, you no, should see. I want to see. I think I just hit 10,078 miles. In how long? Like just a few months? Just yeah, the... end of April. Okay. Well, this, so is, this is June. Yeah. So you've really been testing this thing. So it turns out I'm building a house and I have to drive 170 miles each way to, uh, to meet with the builder and build the house. So I get lots of good mileage on my truck. Ask if he charges it at home. <laughs> do you charge it at home or are you using public infrastructure or both? I do both. My truck okay. can get from my house to the new house that I'm building and back without charging. Because um, you've announced a big number. So this was recently. 450 miles. On the work truck. Boom. On this one. Yes. Yes. With it's the, currently at 90% state of charge showing that it has 400 miles of range. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. That, that's really impressive for it's an electric. It's actually getting 450 miles when I drive it. And so I how, don't um, drive it lightly. Well, right. So you still have 510 horsepower. Yep. Combined, right? Yep. Two motors. So it's still all wheel drive four by four. It is. So, but I, I was actually driving this truck, um, not yours. <laughs> I wouldn't touch your truck. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mine's special. No, I'm I, I was driving a truck in this fleet and I noticed a couple things. First of all, maneuverability, right? Yes. That hit me in the face right away. But this is not an all wheel steer vehicle. It is not four wheel steer. So, how did you do that? The um, independent rear suspension and the front steering is just, we've got the all new architecture, ground up build. We keep talking about this, you know, purpose built for the purposes of full size truck, but also looking at the pain points of truck owners. So we purposely made in steering radius, steering turns, turn circles, like we built it all in to be the best that we could so that we get rid of all the pain points that customers have about full-size trucks because it's a big truck it's a full-size truck yeah so five foot eleven bed i'm you know what shocked me also the size of the cab yeah <laughs> and by the way i think i now know why you put this truck into this event okay the, you wanted them to wash it for you I, is that true this is a funny story so i have two yellow labs and three okay. kids and the three kids in the two yellow labs can fit fit wonderfully comfortable in this back seat but i don't see so, any hair i don't see any dog hair um there is dog hair i had to clean it up myself okay. oh maybe not oh there's evidence right here of dog hair okay this truck because of the vinyl work truck flooring and things i took a leaf blower and blew all of the um hair out of the truck and cleaned this truck myself and it's got basically vinyl floor kind of like plasticky floor right? yep yeah it's great to clean easy to maintain like i said the dog hair just comes right out of it so it's a really easy to clean, easy ownership experience for our fleet um, customers. And then you have a couple more numbers. So let's let's do. go to the business end of the truck. Yes. So 1,400 pounds of payload. Yeah, that's up from our reveal. And 10,000 towing. 10,000 pounds towing. I'm really glad you did that. Yes. You know, as you're progressing in your development yep. and, and design, because work trucks, you know, they always look for more, right? More, yeah. more, more, more. I mean, we really wanted to focus on an EV pickup truck that was still a pickup truck at its base. And to have a best pickup truck with the best trailering dynamics, capability, range, payload. I mean, these are all things that are important to our customers. It's a five foot 11 bed. It fits everything in there it needs to. Um, it's a compelling uh, truck and it's purposely built from the ground up on an all new architecture. So we didn't take the existing Silverado architecture and put a battery under it. We built it all in. And by doing that and developing our own Ultium battery um, packs, mm -hmm. we're able to just capitalize on the efficiencies across gotcha. the truck. There's a big controversy here um, yes. I, we have to address because I think some of the viewers and listeners would say there is no cut line between the bed and the I cab, know, I know. right? So is this a unibody? But we just remember we talked about it last time. I know, we talked time. about this. It's not a unibody and it's not a body on frame. So what the heck is it? It's a new kind of architecture that everybody <laughs>, laughs at me when I say Ulta body. And you're even still laughing about this. Well, Ulta not body. about the name, but it's still, I mean, I'm envisioning kind of a skateboard. Am I right? There is when a battery in... pack that is a skateboard-like structure okay. that acts as part of the structure for safety, for dynamics, for all the structural feel, for noise and vibration, for ride. The center of gravity is nice and low because of that battery pack. And then on top of that, this continuous body um, is bolted to the battery pack and that makes up the total structure. So you could think of the battery as a frame, but it's not a full frame because it doesn't go across to the back of the pickup bed. 
So it's literally an hmm. all new architecture that we've designed to a get hybrid. all the efficiencies. A hybrid between <laughs> body on frame and body frame integral. I, I gotcha. But not a hybrid propulsion. Right, it's all electric. All electric. Sorry I used that term. It's okay. Okay. I so, forgive you. So I see you have a tonneau cover, I which do. is hard folding, yep. hard fold, folding cover. Um, interesting. What are we looking at? I'm, gonna, I'm, okay. I'm looking at your broken so, antenna. So, I know. So, do you so, want to know why that happened? Why is your why? antenna broken? broken yeah. I can't tell you really on film. But I was using this truck for camping, and I have been maximizing the usage of the truck. All right, so, so, and so it's a little quick fix to fix my antenna. All right, so Andre's being nice because you guys are friends. So I'm going to ask you the hard questions. Sure, go for it. Are you okay? All right. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm gonna go be, for it. I'm gonna Let's be, try. I'm going to be the mean guy, okay? Let's try. All right, so... No, it's three, top three in TFL fashion, top three. Yes. Okay, number three, work truck. Yes. No uh, multi pro tailgate. No mid gate. Work trucks don't have multi pro tailgates. RST has both of those. As a yep. work guy, wouldn't I want like the mid gate? Wouldn't I want the more efficient? You know? I don't think so. I no? think fleet customers are looking for usages, not necessarily full versatility. I mean, the reality is that price is still a point for them, so yep. we're not going to add in extra features that they're not frankly asking for. We sat down with our fleet customers and asked them questions about range, asked them questions about usability and capability, and um, the off-board power was really the big one for them that they wanted. We need a, a good price point for an EV fleet pickup truck as well, so we're not going to put all the bells and whistles from the RST into the work truck. Okay. At the end of the day, it's a work truck. All right, so that's number three. Number yep. two, I was just on your website. Uh, yes. And you're advertising 39000 plus dealer handling and such, but it's not going to be that, is it? It's going to be a lot more. Yeah, I think Amy talked more about that. She's yeah. probably more the expert in it. What I'll say is that um, the vehicle will be a slightly higher price. It's going to come with more range and features, and there's price pressures all around the industry, so I don't think it would be surprising to say. It'll still be a price leader for who it is versus our competition. And I think that's what stays important. All right, number one, this yes. is my softball question. What's your favorite part of the truck? That's not a hard question. I know, but come on, you gotta end that up with That is not a hard one. question no. because everybody that knows me knows. <laughs> they're, all like, they're all like, uh oh, what's he gonna ask? <laughs> I, yeah, everybody's nervous. I am what's a tailgater yeah. and I am a partier. Okay. So the offboard power of the 10.2 kilowatts. I just took our team onto a camping trip where I put the tent in the bed, I put the air mattress that was powered through the offboard power into the tent, and I had my heated blanket running all night, keeping me warm because when we went camping, it was still cold at night. Yeah, it so is a the changer. offboard power for me is like huge. We take it to my cabin that I'm redoing. I just said I was building that house 170 miles away. And um, we were able to use all the tools to cut all the wood, make you know stairs to get into the different locations before the cement guy came. Everything that we can do out of this pickup truck, the second favorite thing is trailering. Most of the time that I'm trailering either my snowmobiles up north in the winter or my boat in the summer, um, I forget the trailers on the back. And I think that's a funny story. I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny because it means that it's so good and it's been developed so well that you forget that you're towing a trailer. So, that's unusual. So I'm not gonna name the competitor, but there is another competitor here. There is, in, 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 not here, in Michigan. but in yes, Michigan. Yes. Uh, and uh, they have an electric truck that they has do. a range, stated range of just over 300 miles. And of course we've done a lot of, well, we like to say towing, you say trailering, you say whatever you want. Towing's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we found that it's very difficult because what ends up happening is you basically cut that range in half. Yep. So with 450 miles of range, I feel like you could go 200 miles, maybe even more, is that possible? Um, we have done the comparisons and testing yeah. and for the same trailer between an ICE and an EV, you get the same fall off of range. So the same performance degradation. You know that towing depends on the type of trailer, the aerodynamics, the speed, the weather conditions, a lot of other things around it. But what I will tell you is, um, I've personally experienced towing in multiple conditions on the truck and it very much follows exactly what my um, internal combustion pickup truck does in terms of uh, range performance. Yeah, I think so if you get 20% less out of your ice, you're going to see 20% yeah. less here. I think people don't realize that that is what happens in an internal combustion engine because it's much quicker to fill up, right? So, sure, so of you, course. You, so gasoline has a lot more potential energy. Right. Uh, and so towing uses a lot more potential energy. And the other thing I think people don't realize is that in an internal combustion engine, most of that energy is used to heat certain parts and is wasted as heat, right? Mm -hmm. That's why there's no big air intakes on the front of this because you're not actually wasting. So this is much more efficient. Andre, what were you saying in terms of, uh, here, I'll give you the thing back, in terms of uh -oh. MPG, 
how that compares? Well, one gallon of gasoline is equivalent to about 33 ga uh, kilowatt hours of energy. Okay. That's a conversion that EPA uses yep. to yep. convert from MPG to MPGE. So if this, you know, uh, we talked about the Hummer EV, which is kind of a relative to this truck. I've never heard of it before. No? <laughs> Tell me more um, about it. So, so the Hummer EV. Yeah, we, we, at the end of GM, right? Oh, GMC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. This is the Chevrolet. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I understand. Okay. But but we, we we talked about you know that's a big vehicle, super square and boxy and yes, big. Yes. Yes. Uh, but it still con 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 converts to about 60 mpge. It's still a great. So range it's using that truck. energy energy efficiently. That's it what uses we're the energy efficiently. We've designed our own in-house batteries with the Altium architecture, right? The battery architecture. And what's most important about the competitor that you just talked about is. Um, it's not just about efficiency, it's about range. People keep saying, oh, well, I have a very efficient truck. Well, that doesn't matter if it only gets you 200 miles, if you only can get 100 miles of towing out of it. What matters is that we can go farther by over 100 miles of any other truck that's out there. So, so what's really important for this EV segment is getting that range. So why don't you ask her about that really cool thing you figured out, or she showed us about the spare tire. It's oh. a really thoughtful feature. We, we, were, we were kind of struggling to figure it's, it out. It's really hard to show on this one because there's a 4x8 yeah, there's sheet of plywood. plywood there. So, yeah. so truck, truck guys and gals, we, you know, I wanted to know how to change a spare tire. Um, and also while we're walking over here, I wanted They're to ask you, I was going to ask you about testing, right? Yes. Because we were talking about Alaska. We took one of our project trucks all the way to Alaska, which was the... F-150 Lightning. Yep. Um, what kind of testing are you putting your trucks through? Hot, cold, cross-country, local, um, altitude. So basically what you've done with Everywhere. trucks. Everywhere. Everywhere we've taken a full-size truck, we've taken an EV full-size truck, yes. So cold climates. Cold climates. Super hot climates. Hot climates, altitude, grades, coastal. High elevation. Yeah. I've always wondered, are EVs affected by altitude? Yeah, they get better. Um, they do get better. It's yeah. like a fine wine. No, because there's layer, less resistance, right? Well, first of all, they're more efficient if you're going downhill versus uphill because you can get a lot of regen braking yes. on the downhills. Yes. Um, and you have adjustable um, regen on this. We have one pedal driving, yes. Right, but you can have almost no regen coasting. Correct. You have normal regen and yep. then high regen, yes. which I tried, yeah. high which is, is strong. High is a learned um driving habit but once you learn it it's a really great so you have to mod enabler. modulate the pedal mm -hmm. kind of can, yep. can you use high to toe yeah yeah absolutely because it would feel like it would give you much more braking yeah plus you regain energy right and you're saving your trailer brakes too because you're regening you know the trailer weight is pushing the truck so it's really great regen in, in one pedal high I gotcha. So, right, so we came up to this truck. Roman showed underneath it. And you guys there's, asked me a question there's, earlier. There's a spare tire. Yes. By the way, it does not look like the spare tire is full size uh, as, as the other. It's is not that the correct? same as the road tire. It is not okay, the same so size. So it's a slightly smaller yes. diameter. Yep. But you have these little doors in the bed. We do. What is that about? That is how you access with that tool that I'm not even going to say the, the right the, word. The wrench. The, yeah, the wrench, yeah. you know, rod tool. Yeah. That is how you access it. And w we put it on the inside of the truck bed so that when you close the tailgate, uh -huh. you are locked out and no one can steal your spare tire. Because so there is actually the... a lot of theft in spare tires, so by what, the way. So that was one of the pain points that the customers were talking about? Yes, pain okay. points for customers were okay. that we didn't you, lock you, spare you know, tires You know, Nicole, the other thing they can't steal is a kettle converter. They can't steal the catalytic converter. That's correct. And it would it be have... really difficult to steal the battery. I'm just saying, <laughs> it I've does tried to drop the battery and it uh -huh. won't work very easily. It's pretty big. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I like Not a lot of stuff you can steal off this thing. <laughs> well, yeah, plus the tailgate is lockable, right? Oh, all, yeah. all of it yeah. is lockable. Tailgate locks. So that's really cool. And you incorporated rails on the top of the bed mm -hmm. so you can have your racks. And you can see stuff. that you can still use accessories on the truck. There's been yeah. a lot of. Um, interest in accessories for the truck, especially from our fleet customers, ladder racks and things like that. So, so can you say anything about? So you you initially when GM when Chevrolet announced the Silverado EV, you said potentially up to twenty thousand pounds of towing. Yeah. Um, do you have something in the works? Can you say anything about what else you're working on? Um. Or more payload? Can I just ask for more payload? Yes. So, here's the thing. 
Okay. In every truck, a fully and in the segment, in the market as a standard, when people advertise payload and advertise towing, it's off of the models that are available that model year. So as we bring more models in with less fully loaded options, your payload will get better. So you'll absolutely see much higher payloads from our model year 25 lineup when we offer more than just one work truck, one RST. Right? And like one energy pack. Yes, right? there's Multiple just energy one packs. version of these trucks okay. right now going out, right? So the 450 mile truck has all of these options. You can't pick anything else. The reservations are sold out this year, as you guys heard earlier. When we open up reservations for model year 25 and start building model year 25, you will see payload numbers that increase. It really just depends on now, what do you want? Do you want maximum um, range? Do you want maximum towing? Do you want maximum payload? Do you want something in between? The offerings will be available for everything. Well, that's good news. Yes, it's because, it's a standard yeah. full-size truck, well, you have to known start, thing. You have to start somewhere, yes. right? Yes. And then make progress Absolutely. from there. Okay. Do you have any more questions, Roman? I didn't any feel like really... you weren't that nice, by the way. I didn't think that was that hard. Well, I wasn't that hard. That's good. Okay. Okay. Well, I figured. I just you know. thought it might be really hard. Well, well, I had one. I, okay. Okay. Hold on. I have one other hard okay, question. Okay. What's the hard one? What do you call your truck? Queen Bee. <laughs> okay. My truck is called <laughs> Queen, Queen Bee, Bee. <laughs> which anybody who knows me knows exactly why. Okay. <laughs> my truck is called. I, Queen I thought Bee. that was too personal. So no, I mean, no, absolutely all right. not. All right, I it, we. I didn't want to go there. Adjective animal. Everyone. Yeah. Even though Queen isn't an adjective, I decided to overrule. But yeah, I mean, I love being the chief engineer of this truck. You guys have met most of my team that have made this come true. Yeah. Everybody's heart and soul is in this truck with a passion for truck ownership. And every little bit, including the, lock, the way that we've locked up the spare tire has been thought through in just obsessive detail to make sure that we could get everything out of the truck from an all new architecture. So is it is it uh, gratifying as a chief engineer to finally send your baby out into the world and yes. then to have customers, you know, use it the way you intended them to use it or not? What I think is more important is that I don't worry about you guys driving the vehicles. Hmm. There's a lot of people out there who like go through a lot of, you know, things to get these trucks ready for you to drive. I pulled mine up from my drive and it's running power for everybody else and it could go into that drive any moment. These trucks are absolutely capable, ready, and they're of high quality and just they speak for themselves. So I think you guys have driven them today. You did. You're going to um, you have what, some you know what I love about trailering tomorrow. Trucks is um, they've got a long wheelbase. They're very heavy and they kind of ride like my dad had um, when he became successful, he bought a big old Cadillac, right, mm -hmm. in the 70s. Yeah. And that's kind of that 1970s Cadillac ride where you're just kind of floating yep. down the road. And, and I, I feel like, especially this truck, has that really... And, and you know, uh, look, it's, it's hard because there's a lot of politics now, unfortunately, with electric vehicles. Yeah. But, but to me, uh, the difference between electric and internal combustion is kind of heart versus head, right? Correct. One is very emotional, one is very intellectual. That's right. Do you uh, want to hear it versus what do you want to do with it? Exactly. Yep. And, and that's why I think with work trucks, I feel like that's a very intellectual thing, right? Because mm -hmm. it's about numbers. It's not about, you know, taking it to the drag street, even though these things are freaking fast. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> throw it until hell for a few minutes and then talk to me. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> but but I, think, I think if people realize that it's not better or worse, it's just different, then it becomes a much more uh, logical decision for people. I think it's really important, too, that it's not just about, like, big batteries can weigh it down, center gravity is better. I mean, when you look across the competitors, and we do this, right, because sure. we want to know our competitors just as much as our own, how we integrate it. So having that ground up build versus just choosing to take a current Silverado ice and putting batteries underneath it is a very different experience. The suspension is tuned specifically for this truck, so you're not getting... Um, I would just say uh, some of the tail wagging the dog feels that you get out of some of the other um, vehicles that are out on the market. The trailering dynamics and the overall ride and handling are connected to the truck and you feel connected to the road. So we're not um, trying to do anything that is covering something or, or you know fixing a problem. We've created really great solutions and therefore didn't have problems to overcome. And, and, and that's just honestly what it means to be able to do an all new architecture. It's the most exciting thing a chief engineer can ever do is grow an all new architecture. Uh, so once I, I had this conversation with one of the chief, former chief engineers of the F-150 and I mm -hmm. said, do you like being, and he said, no, it's terrifying because there's so much riding on it. Do you feel that pressure? I mean, let's face it, nope. this is a very important vehicle for it's GM. It's one of the most yeah. important vehicles for General Motors, not just in terms of, um, capability and showing that you know EV pickup trucks can be a force in the market but also just for overall our EV growth um, future 
I don't feel that pressure because I'm so confident how the truck is. That's great. I would feel that pressure if there was something I was worried about someone would find. Right. Oh no, someone's going to find something. There's no one's going to find anything. We are handing these trucks off and saying, go drive them, go run them through their paces, go take it out trailering the same way that you did with some of those competitive vehicles. We're going to knock your socks off. I'm confident. And you guys know I put 10,000 miles on my truck. I know what it can do. Yeah. I always like to think to myself, I wasn't even though Andrea will make fun of me and my son does too. I wasn't old enough to be around when we went from horse and buggy to, yeah. you know, but we were living through this really cool time, it's an right? awesome Isn't time. It? I mean, and with change, there's opportunity. I felt like in the past, you know, there were these little incremental changes, right? Mm -hmm. And every little thing became very competitive, but now you've got a clean sheet and you can just go out and actually create the future yep. truck. Because as much as some people think that electrification isn't the future, it probably is. It's just, it's, the momentum is just too great. The momentum yeah. across the industry yeah, is exactly. there. And fun fact, I never drove an EV before I became the chief engineer for this truck. My, um, my leader at the time threw me in a Hummer EV for a weekend and said, you know, go, go figure it out. Mm. And I took my daughter to a uh, soccer tournament in Indianapolis and had to learn how to charge, what fast chargers were, how to do everything, how do I know, I've got this range anxiety. And um, I think it was actually a really great experience to start out that way because I am a full-size truck owner, driver, user. I've been for my whole life. And so I brought this new perspective of an ICE owner to EVs and specifically focused on what are the pain points going to be? How do we get over them? How do we make it feel better for them? And that's really what this product is showing. And, you know, the other hard part that you're facing is electrification is not just about, you know, an electric truck. It's about a whole new language, like you just said. Absolutely. It's about, you know, going from miles per gallon to kilowatts per mile, right? There's, yep. just, there's just all this other thing that, that you guys are going to have to learn, or maybe you don't want to learn. I mean, obviously, <laughs> GM also offers plenty of... Yeah, we'll help you. <laughs> yeah, you can choose. <laughs> Whatever you want to learn, yeah. Diesel. Or you could listen to TFL Talking Trucks podcast. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Where they, they talk about all of the GM products available. <laughs> yes. And the Queen Bee. And the Queen Bee. Is that you or, the, or both? Um, probably both, both to right. be honest. Well, yeah. well, thank you very much for yeah, your time. Yeah, it was great I'm, to meet I'm, you guys. I'm very grateful. Uh, and uh, Andre, um, thank you very Andre much Andre, as, as well. always, it's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Ciao. You know, Andre, when I start, when I said I'm going to ask you three hard questions in that interview, there were all these other PR people around her, and it got very quiet. Yeah, you could hear the crickets. <laughs> Because. But she she handled it well, you know. She 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 really. Uh, that's a great. She's thing. She's in charge. That's a great thing. You can really tell she's in charge, and she knows every aspect of the truck. And there was one interesting thing that happened to us. Uh, and let's tell that story. So you, of course, being you, decided to crawl under the truck right away. And what did you see under the truck? Yeah, so before we interviewed her, yes. right, I was um, looking underneath because and, and nobody knew what this was. But go ahead. Yeah, and, and I look down, and the work truck has a spare tire, yes. right? I'm like, great, because the Hummer didn't, Yes, remember? Um, so I look, and it looks different. There's so like a basket. There's like a steel basket holding the tire up underneath the truck. So, and uh, I'm like, well, how do you remove it? How do you get the tire down? Yeah, so let me give you a little background. So for, for those of you non-truck guys or gals, the way normally a spare tire works is there's a spare tire underneath the bed of the truck, and then there's a little, little plastic flap ne next to the, like the license plate, mm -hmm. and you stick like a little uh, what would you call that? The, the pole with the, with the handle. It's like a, it's like a jack it's handle. It's like a socket. Yeah, it's like a jack handle, yeah. and, and you stick it. And imagine you know the way that you jack up a car. Well, this is basically the opposite. You then jack down the spare, so the, the spare lowers, uh, and then you have access to it. Yeah. Uh, but when Andre looked underneath there, he couldn't figure out how to. Uh, basically lower lower, lower the spare tire because there was, there was no jack hole there was yeah. no and so we asked everybody they're like how do you get the spare tire they're like we'll get back to you <laughs> yeah they, they, that's a typical <laughs> PR person when, when when we stump them with something uh, so we asked Nicole and she immediately knew the answer so tell them what the answer is so it's inside the bed yeah so the access point to the spare tire so you have to lower the tailgate and there's two access panels they're pretty small they're like one inch by one inch right mm -hmm. so you pop these little plastic holes and there's two little screw holes where once again, with that handle, you can lower that entire basket of the spare tire down and change the tire. And the real interesting part is why are they there? And now yeah, because we were wondering, why is it inside what? the bed? Yeah, why did you put it underneath the tailgate basically when you close it? And she had the answer. She Which said, was? She said, because people tend to steal spare tires. And so with the tailgate closed, you don't have access to those access ports. To Especially lower with a tonneau cover. Right, right. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, I think the, I actually think the way the tailgate works, it yeah, it's almost it, like pinches it. Right? Yeah, it closes on yeah. top of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it doesn't give you access to, which you know, um, creates some problems. Like imagine if you had a big piece of plywood uh, in the bed. It's kind of like the Honda problem with the ridge line, right? The ridge line has its uh, spare tire underneath the bed, but not accessible from the bottom, accessible from the top. And mm-hmm. so if you put a load in the truck. It's hard to get at the spare tire. Here, you right. don't have to get at the spare tire, but you do have to get at those access points. And if you'd say if you had a two by four that's covering up that, then you're going to have. It's not as bad, but it, it does create a potential issue. Maybe, you know, the fact that it's hard to steal is worth it. Uh, but it was kind of cool. So, Andre, we, we promised to talk about competitors of this truck. Yes. So let's start with the Lightning because obviously that's a direct competitor. Right. And the Lightning is already on sale. Yes. And the Chevy Silverado is going on sale right now as we speak. And I'm talking about the Ford F-150 Lightning. F-150 Lightning. So, so now. And we've owned it. So we're very familiar. Yeah, yeah. we had it for about four months and we put 13,000 miles miles on it. In four months, yeah. Including the trip to Alaska that we talked about in previous podcasts. And and my biggest problem with the Lightning, and we had uh, the Lariat um, with the big battery, which is 130 kilowatt hours. It's like 134, yes. But my biggest problem with it was immediately when we drove it from Michigan, I felt like it was under battery. And what I mean by that is it didn't have a big enough battery. And I know 134 kilowatt hours is a lot compared to like a Mach-E, but this is a truck. Yeah, and it's kind of squarish, right? It's yeah. big. Well, and that's the downside, and, and right? it's heavy. It's based on the current F-150, so you, you're going to have to work around the constraints of the current F-150, whereas the Silverado, uh, it was a fresh design, so you could make it much more aero. So if you're looking at the pictures of this on, on the screen behind us, you'll notice it's got these kind of like uh, uh, flying buttresses behind the uh, rear Oh, there you go. That's a good one. Behind the rear uh, window. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for those is it makes it much more aero, giving you a better coefficient of drag, giving you much more range. And I felt that was always a problem with the Lightning. I love the Lightning. Don't get me wrong. I just felt like it was well under battery. Well, let, let's expand on that a little bit, right? Yeah. Because they had to modify the frame of the F-150 in order to create the Lightning because the Lightning has independent rear suspension. It has obviously two motors, one in the back, one in the rear. Um, I mean, one in the front, one in the back, uh, and, the, and the battery is integral to that frame, right? So the battery is kind of built into that frame as well. So they did have to massage that frame a lot in order to create it, but then they were able to use the cab and the front to a large extent and then the bed. And I think what that allowed Ford to do is a quicker time to market, right? So they were able to uh, design that truck, test it, and, and bring it to market, what, a year ago now, right? Mm-hmm. So... But they like beat you Chevy said, to the market, or, or they beat the Cybertruck to the market. They did not beat the Rivian, no. Right. And the Hummer was uh, around. Hold on. Okay, so the Rivian technically was out first. Yes. But in terms of like number of trucks, I think Ford quickly built more trucks than than Rivian did R1Ts. Yes, uh, I, I think that's I think, true. I think I think there's more Lightnings out there than. But you're right. The, technically, Rivian beat them. Well, you know, now Ford is having trouble building Lightnings also. So they're kind it's of hardest, almost yeah. head to head. Head to right? head. Yeah, I agree. So they're head to head. So, anyways. Uh, I agree. So the maximum range on the F-150 Lightning is 320 miles versus 450 claimed on the Silverado. So that's a huge, you know, that's a huge gap already. Also, charging is important, right? Silverado charges it up to 350 kilowatts because it has the up to 800 volt system. Uh, the Ford does not. No, Ford charges up to what? Two, it's like 200? 200, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember and that. And that matters a lot. Yeah, especially when you're towing. Yes. So you want that fast charge capability. So if you're on a road trip, you need to replenish that power. I don't know what it's level two. The, the, the Ford was high. It was 80 amp. I don't know what the... I, I don't think we asked about the... We don't have a number. number for, on, on level two on the... Yeah, yeah. but I think... It was, the Hummer EV was 50 amp. I remember that for sure. Uh, so anyway, uh, um, the other big difference, of course, is that uh, uh, the Silverado... And now we're talking about the work truck um, is much more work trucky in terms of its than the pro than the pro right the pro is very similar so I don't know where I'm going with this Andre so no no l- l- let me help you yeah help me l- here, l- let me help please you. help so, me Andre no no so the Silverado has a longer bed 
Yeah, right. So, so, Thank you. So I mean, that's where you were going. Yeah. So the Silverado has a 511. Uh, the Ford has a five and a half foot bed. So there is a few inches difference there. That's important. But here's the thing. The, the Lightning, the F-150 Lightning, has more payload, up to about 2,200 pounds of payload. So 1,400 for the Silverado, 2,200 for the Ford. That's a big difference. That's that, like 800 that, pounds. That could be the unit body on frame problem. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> or No, you know what it is. It's the fact that it's got it's, much more batteries. It's a huge battery. battery yeah, it's course. a huge battery. And yeah. they'll have smaller battery versions of the Silverado. Which have more payload. They told the same. 10,000 pounds each. Yeah. So, and the pricing, of course, you know, there's a disparity in price. Uh, but I think when, when we see the one WT, the very, very base Chevy, I think the price is going to be more competitive. Now, uh, if we're talking about the RST that they had there, we're looking at probably, and this is another big number, anywhere from 105. And I heard, I heard say, Andre, I heard tell up to 115 for the RST. Uh, the first edition so, trucks, yeah. yeah. So, which is actually even more than the Hummer EV. Yeah, and I don't understand that really. I mean, it looks cool, like you said. You know, it has the LED bar in the front. It's got 24-inch wheels. 24s. How much are Platinums? Like 99,000? So like they start at 96. Okay, so. So F 150 Lightning Platinum starts around 96. So we heard that might start at 105. So yeah, that's a little bit more than the Platinum Ford. Yeah. So yeah, those prices but are very high. But you're rolling on 23s, Andre. 24s. 24s, that's right. Yes, 24s. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not even like the Maybach, not even the Mercedes Maybach is on 24s. Um, so let's compare it to the Rivian. The Rivian, of course, the biggest difference is it's kind of a tweener truck, so it's not as big. It's a little bit bigger than a midsize, but not quite as big as a half ton or a full size. Uh, and it also has, well, there are different versions of it, but the one that's out has four motors, one in each hub. Um, much more, much quicker, zero to 60. We've done a lot of zero to 60s on that thing and quarter miles, like in the three and a half second, second range. Uh, it's the quickest pickup I think we've ever tested. Yeah, yeah. And it, the and Rivian it, is, yeah. And it's much more Tesla-like in terms of its kind of infotainment, right? So everything's in the screen. Uh, these trucks have regular uh, HVAC controls, buttons. Yeah, it feels more traditional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the Rivian's kind of, I would say, the best way to d describe the difference is, you know, the the... the WT is a work truck. The Rivian R1T is an adventure truck. Or a lifestyle truck. Right. It right? does tow the same. Yeah. So the, uh, actually, no, 11,000, I think. I think the, it tows the, more. The, yeah, you're the, right. The, the Rivian rating. It's got but a lot, it's, ab it's about the same. It's got a lot more horsepower, too. Um, and the Rivian also has a smallish battery by comparison. Also about 130-ish, 134 kilowatt hours in the Rivian. But the Rivian beat, like you said, when we drag raced at the TRX, the Raptor R, um, the Hummer. Yep. So the Rivian is really, I mean, currently the king of acceleration as far as pickups are concerned. And of course, if you compare it to the Hummer EV, the Hummer EV is more of an off-road toy, right? It's a whole different thing. It competes more with a Jeep, I would say, than with, with any of these trucks. Uh, and we, we also own the Hummer EV, so we're very familiar with that. You're rolling on 35s. Uh, you've got a tiny bed. Uh, and if you have a spare tire, no spare tire, you have no bed whatsoever. Yeah. But you do have air suspension, and just like the RST, you do have rear wheel steering, which the Lightning and the Rivian don't have. Right, and the Rivian will not have tank turn. I mean, that feature is possible, but they do not offer it. And, and the Cybertruck, so. that's kind of still up in the air. Yeah, um, so we don't know a lot. I mean, we know the prototypes are out there. You know, we know that you know Tesla is still working on this. But we don't know a lot of specs or how much they're going to charge. We don't know if they're even going to you know, get one built before the end of the year. They promised. I mean, Elon promised Yeah, but one. he promised it two years ago. So <laughs> at this point, his promise is a little uh, suspect, let's say. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, totally. And it's, of course, the styling of the Cybertruck and the construction. Uh, maybe that's – I'm kind of joking, but maybe that's really uh, – uh, unit body on frame for the Cybertruck. Uh, I got to ride in it when it was first launched. The, the thing I just remember is that that windshield is so crazy raked and so steep that when you're sitting in it, you can't touch the, the dashboard where it meets the windshield. It's so far in front of you. Uh, so once again, you know, for all you Tesla fans out there, we don't know. Obviously, it's supposed to start at 39. Not going to happen. Right. Uh, I was guessing, I was talking to some of the people some of the other YouTubers there, and we were guessing, I said 69, they were guessing 79 for the Cybertruck, and I think that's probably more realistic. Yeah, plus, um, well, they also promised mega charging, yeah. like megawatts. So we're talking about 350 kilowatt, but 1,000 kilowatt will be mega. 
megawatt uh, charger because they are working on that for their semi trucks, right? The Tesla is working on that. And I've just been to many Tesla chargers going D to D, Dis uh, Disney, Disney. I say Disney to Disney. I have videos on LTFL? Uh, yes, the videos on LTFL.com. And I've been to what, 14 Tesla chargers across country, and none of them were pulled through. Yeah, none and of that. charging is going to be a so charging pickup trucks with trailers so, is going to be a problem. So the good news with the Silverado EV is that it's the charger um, is in the same place as the Tesla, which is driver side rear quarter, mm -hmm. uh, which is great to backing up into a Tesla because now they have that partnership with Tesla, of course. But not so great if you're towing because you're towing. you'll have to block all the, <laughs> all, the all the chargers unless you park behind them somehow. Hey. Um, uh, we got to wrap this up because we're running yeah. out of time. But before we do, uh, we got to talk about the RAM. We, not much to talk about the RAM. We don't know a lot about Well, the it. Rev. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we do know something. Um, they promised huge range, right? So they promised up to 500 miles without range extending and maybe even a range extender that none of these trucks are talking about yet. Yeah, but, the, you know, we once again, they promised a lot in the concept and none of it came true in the real truck right that they're building but well, the, they had the mid gate in the concept that didn't, didn't make through. it that seating for six didn't anyway a, they had a pass through from the front that didn't happen uh, basically uh, the rev looks and this is i'm not trying to be critical i'm just saying there were a lot of promises made and then a lot of them disappeared when the real truck came out which is a shame uh, but we're looking at two years from now andre well they promised like end of 2024 so that's still over a year and a half from now yeah so and they promise, you know, big range, big horsepower, uh, really good charging, 350 uh, kilowatt uh, charging. But once again, they're not here yet. The RAM is not here. Okay. How about Patreons? Oh, yeah. So I want to thank Johnny. Yeah. Um, it sounds like I'm making this up, but I'm, I'm not. Johnny just supported us with a $10 thank you, donation. Johnny. So thank you very much. Uh, I don't have a question from Johnny. He just um, – but there is uh, another – question or comment from Ryan uh, Weavers. Yeah. I just bought a 2023 Silverado 1500 5.3 liter V8 a few months ago, and I want to do at least one camping out trip. For now, we're just uh, renting a travel trail, but I wanted to know what are some things I need to buy in order to tow properly. Hey. Uh, so a hitch, our friends at Gen Y. Yeah, Gen Y. We highly recommend them. We not only, uh, they not only sponsor us, but we use them all the time, especially in the Ike Outlet, and we have found them to be exceptional. So certainly you need a hitch. Um, because it's highly adjustable. So yes. that's important. Uh, or they uh, have that right. new, like, like uh, what's the one that's kind of... Uh, We've got torsion. Torsion, so it, yeah. It has actually some cushion. Yeah, that's pretty in, cool. In the hitch. And also, if you're towing a big camper, like you're saying, uh, you need weight distribution. Mm -hmm. So look into a Gen Y with a weight distribution um, attachment because you want to level the load and also prevent the swaying you don't want that big camper swaying yeah and then you know maybe uh, a membership to cat scales <laughs> it's always good to weigh <laughs> because you know it's one thing when you f buy a trailer it's another thing when you fill it up and you'd be amazed at how quickly it gets very heavy mm -hmm. uh, so you want to be sure to not uh um, you know, I, 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 not to exceed the, uh, the, the, the weight limits on your truck. Also, uh, towing mirrors. Does this truck have towing mirrors? Well, I don't know, but um, that's always good, if, especially if you have a camping trailer that's really wide. Wide, yeah. They're usually wide, about eight and a half feet, which is wider than the truck. You either need mirror extensions or a t proper towing mirror, which Chevy offers. Yeah. So you can get that. All kinds of... Uh, Extension cords if you're going to get land power and maybe even adapters. I'm just or maybe Silverado EV to, <laughs> yeah, to, Silver. to power your camper. To power. That's the other thing you can do. You can power your camper with these Yeah. Uh, if you're not going traditional tent camping. Well, guys, thank you for joining us. If you do want to help support us, where do they go, Andre? On Patreon. So patreon.com slash TFL car is our only page on Patreon. Uh, and also t old TFL.com where you'll find everything on automotive, right? in one place yes especially i think we did like six videos uh you know we, we talked about offboard power we, we did the first tow we did a straight up comparison to the rst to the first drive we did a first drive uh and we did uh, they had this cool station there that was uh basically a fuel cell uh hooked up to a hydrogen station uh that uh, allowed them to charge uh uh the hummer that hummer the silverado ev uh, without actually having electricity uh, going to this like 
farm that we were at, which is cool. Yeah, so that's another video we did. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll let Nathan come back. I'm sorry if you were expecting Nathan. Uh, you that's know. all right, yeah. I bet, but he's probably... Come, come, come back next week. Yeah, he's probably over with me talking about cars on our car <laughs> podcast. So yes, head on over to Talking Cars. All right, see you guys next time. Ciao. Thank you.